I'm going to show you how to make numbers lie. Hi there, this is Charles Ray Dawson. I am the Associate Broker, Residential Sales Manager at ProStar Realty. This is the Unnamed Real Estate Podcast, Episode 106. And getting started a little late, you can tell by the sun. I got about ooh, 20 minutes or so before that's right in my face. So let's see how fast we can get this done today. <clears throat> Just um, I'm starting late today because I had a, a continuing education class earlier today that I had scheduled. It's a... Uh, all real estate agents are required to continue have uh, 24 hours total of continuing education classes over a two-year period before we renew our licenses every two years. My renewal's up in September. I think I want to do this some more, so I st decided to start getting the classes done, not leaving it to the last minute. Um, but today was going to be it was all about agency, and. I keep promising you guys one of these days um, I'm going to do an agency video and really break it down to you and especially cover some of the things that I dislike about dual agency. And uh, today's not the day. And basically the, the reason why today's not the day is I do not have the time to get really in depth on this thing that I wanted to. And I also got uh, somebody tagged me in a Facebook today <clears throat> with a video and I watched the video and I'd much rather respond to that. So let's let's start the process let's let's go where we need to go with okay first we're going to start with of course as we always do the numbers and this is going to lead into the video by the way all right so these are the numbers for february the 8th 2023 actives this week were 15,473 down uh, 61 from last week new listings were 2,109 up 158 from last week contracts last week were 2,634 down 13 from the week before or up 13 from the week before closings were 1,015 Coming soon to an MLS near you are 721 new listings. And for the Crawford numbers we got here, we are at 60, 65.6 6 on supply, still trending down. Our uh, demand is at 77.9, still trending up. And that puts us at a Crawford report number 118.7. So then breaking that uh, Crawford numbers down to the individual cities and whatnot, we are looking at Fountain Hills is still uh, coming down month over month. They are now at 161.5. Uh, Paradise Valley is the other loser on that. They're down 3% month over month to 149.7. We still see growth in every other city out there. Uh, Chandler is uh, at number two position with a Cromford index number of 157. And of course, our buyer deals out there, the buyer market stuff, is still Goodyear, Queen Creek, Maricopa, and Buckeye, although we do see them all trending up uh, month over month. And our big winner looks like Avondale. Avondale still leading at 38% change from last, this time last month, they were in a, a soft um, balanced market at 94, and now they're definitely into the buyer's market side at 130.5. So <clears throat> once again, continuing on in these things, and as I like to know, Cromford report numbers are balanced by how many people are looking for houses and how many people are selling houses. All right, that tells you whether you're not in the buyer's or seller's market. As, as we go back to looking at this, always remember we can we can we can say it like this. You have 656 houses out there for sale. You have 779 buyers looking at for them. All right. That means, you know, the ratio is at 118.7. Anything between 90 and 110 is considered a balanced market. Anything above 110 is considered into the seller's market. But of course, this is location based. All right. So when you see numbers that cover Maricopa County as a whole or Arizona as a whole, you got to take that into account. Different markets are going to be responding in different ways. All right. Queen Creek, Maricopa, Buckeye, Goodyear, still hard to get a house sold out there. All right. Surprise. They're balanced. We only have two houses of the, or two houses, two, two locations on, of the bigger metropolitan areas. You know, that's surprise and Goodyear that are considered a balanced market. Actually, wait, it was surprise and Peoria is considered a balanced market. In fact, Peoria is at a hundred. That's balance balance. That is for every house out there. You have a buyer, right? It's just a matter of making sure those two meet up. All right. And then continuing on Gilbert, Mesa, Tempe, and it, the list just keeps going up. So 
<clears throat> our interest rates that we got going on is a little bit of bit of news I want to cover because this is going to start slowing all of this up a bit. Is um, we dropped all through January, first week of February looks like that we, you know, started to bounce back up a bit, and it's doing this kind of stuff as markets want to do. I'm personally think that might have been effect because of the um, employment numbers that came out last week. Right. Those employment numbers blew everybody away and that might signal to the market, hey, uh, maybe we're still going to have some inflation because inflation, of course, is made because you have too much money chasing too few goods and services. Right? And if we have all these people employed, that's just more money out there to be chasing. And so maybe that's affecting that. I don't think it had anything to do with the Fed rate because the Fed rate was pretty much baked into the cake for months in advance. But, you know, that kind of stuff, you know, makes people a little bit jittery when it comes to the uh, money markets and stuff. So that might be what's going on to that. But rates right now are between 6 and 6.25 uh, with 1% or 1 point, you know, towards buying down your rate. And in all of these numbers or all of these areas that we were looking at on this chart, you know, except for maybe Fountain Hills, Chandler Paradise, uh, Phoenix, I would still write an offer asking for closing costs. Although we are seeing people countering back on the closing costs and say, hey, yeah, uh, thank you for the offer. Let's lose the closing costs. We got other offers on the table. We're starting to get that multiple offer thing going on. Right? It's not the 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 all in one weekend, but it's three or four, two or three strong offers. And you don't want to be the weak sister coming on that thing with your Asking under, you know, listing under asking and for closing costs and everything else, right? So keep an eye out, uh, keep an eye out for that. Uh, but like I said, if you're down there in those buyer markets, right? Goodyear, Queen Creek, Maricopa, and Buckeye, feel free. Ask for 3% closing costs. Lowball them. See what happens. They probably have, you know, especially a house that's been on the market for over, you know, let's say 60 days or so. Watch it when you are bidding on a house that just did a price drop. Right. A house that just did a price drop, if they just dropped their price by 10%, you know, 10% on Thursday and you're in there on Friday and you think you're going to claw back another 10% from them, that's probably not going to happen at that point. All right. But it's the one that's been sitting out there that's getting stale that you don't see a lot of price change. Maybe you've noticed that uh, they've been dropping their price every two weeks by maybe a percent. Every two weeks they drop it another percent. Every two weeks they drop another percent. And then last week they dropped it a percent. Now maybe you can come in there and head them off at the pass. So, so um, you know, negotiating strategy and stuff like that. Remember, I did a podcast a little bit a while ago um, talking about the elements of an offer and how you make an offer look good to the buyer and the seller. And both people walk away thinking that they won because they both got what they wanted. The seller got a number they can brag about to their friends and the buyer got a house and a great deal because they didn't have to pay closing costs, right? So go back there, find that episode and everything like that. Take a look at that. So, so let's talk about our um, other topic. Um, like I said, right before I was getting ready to record, I, I was saying that I was going to touch on agency briefly, you know, basically hit it and quit it and move on. But then, um, you know, checking through Facebook, I was looking for a meme that I saw a couple of days ago to put on the end of the video. Like, I'm, did you guys know that if you actually stay through my credits and the music and everything at the end of one of these episodes, sometimes I will put a little funny picture or meme or something at the end of it. I think one or two of you might notice that. I don't think anybody ever does, but now you know. If you're paying attention right now, you know. So anyways, so I'm looking at Facebook and um, a friend and a former client of mine posted a video that he found on YouTube. And, you know, I'm always talking about these other YouTubes on videos where here comes the sun. Um, talking about it's doom, gloom, you know, here comes the market crashes, get ready to buy all the foreclosed properties from HUD coming on the market in the next six months. It's the best time, da, da, da. Oh, and by the way, if you want some place to put your money that's safe, why don't you buy my doggy coin, doji coin? Or why don't you buy gold? Or why don't you buy whatever the hell thing, whatever they're selling on the side besides real estate when they're telling you real estate stuff? I, I you know, it's, it's just one of those things I noticed is that you – if you're, let's say, going to buy sports drinks, all right, I want to buy Muscle Mass Gainer Protein 2000, all right? I am in the market for, 
and human growth hormone or whatever, you're going and you're looking at the videos and everything that are talking about how to gain weight and how to work out and how to, you know, how to increase your gains and how to go to the gym without winding up a TikTok star because somebody, you glanced at some girl who happened to be recording herself. You know, that's where you go that. But when you, when you're, so, but you don't sit there and look at the knitting channel and then decide, oh, yeah, this this guy is advertising weight gain formula and he's got a great crochet channel talking about different stitches and whatnot. You know, so when you're watching somebody like that and it's like if, if you're if you realize that they have an underlying market and they are selling a product that is not real estate or real estate services, right? You have to sort of wonder about why are they suddenly trying to talk you down against other investments besides the one that they're selling. Does that make sense? Am I ranting? I'm probably ranting. Anyways, so the uh, first screenshot of this thing, and that's, I'm not going to link to this guy or something. I just wanted to show this, this first uh, picture of what he showed. All right. And this, I stole this off of Facebook because every time I clicked on this link, it would suddenly start playing the, the video and I couldn't get this graphic. But it's, um, you know, there's a person calling me out, right? New Arizona data is bad. Arizona housing market blows up. Okay, now let's talk about English. English is, is our language. We speak it, all right? And it has past tense, present tense, and future tense. All right. Using the term blows up. All right. That's a present tense use. That means it is currently active blowing up. There are still parts and pieces in the air, you know, or uh, they're not currently under the ground buried on top of, you know, burying Turkish people or anything like that. It's this. All right. So I'm and I'm a numbers guy. So the first thing I do is I look at the numbers. All right. And I go, all right, let's take a look at what he's got here. Uh, June. All right. Five hundred and sixty thousand. All right. Doesn't tell you what that number is, though. That should say, is that the median price? All right. Or is that the average price? Remember, there's a big difference between the two. We're not going to go back into the difference between median and average, right? But then it shows next week or next month, all right, it's down to 510, all right? And then it's at 530. Wait, doesn't that go, didn't that mean it go up? Okay, so next thing when you're reading a chart, right? When you read a chart and you're using a color, to denote a positive or negative, traditionally, negatives are red, positives are green. Sometimes, if you're an accountant, the positives will be black and the negatives will be red. And the red, will, they'll have little brackets around them, right? But that's accountancy stuff, and that's what we got escrow for. But I just wanted to, you know, to point out this. When you look at this right here, they're saying that we went from 560 down to 510. All right, now we're at 530. Wait a minute, we just went up. Now we're back down to 515. All right. And notice this percentage change here doesn't match the actual percentages of the numbers. I just noticed that. What the hell? All right. And then we go 5, 515 all the way down to 497, 890. That's a very precise number, by the way. That's a very precise number. All right. And then we go to 506 up again. And then December down to 465. All right. So saying that we went from 560 to 465 with a price reduction total of 95,000 being a total of 16.96 percent. Maybe they're they're calculating these things off of the 560 to start. I think maybe that's what they're doing. I think they're calculating it off the 560 to start. But I think what they're trying to do is they're trying to show that the, everything is trending down, right? Yes, we are indeed trending down. But let's continue. Let's continue on with this, right? It has the pre-pandemic of 2019 and 2018. Those would be the year or year, year over year growth. And I don't think that 24.10 is accurate. We went up in 2018, but I don't think we went up 24%. That sounds a lot more like 20, uh, 2021 numbers. All right. But anyways, so that's what we're looking at on this pre-pandemic. So they're completely dropping out the pandemic years, you know, 2020 and 2021. Right. And it says that we're coming into the beginning of this year at 560. All right. And then we drop down to 465 for a drop of 16.96%. Now, if you guys remember, or my longtime watchers out there, uh, it was episode 101 at the beginning of this year when I did the I'm wrong episode. I don't know why you guys keep me, me bringing this back up because, yes, I blew I blew last year's um you know, quote what I thought was going to happen. But it's got a slide in there that is 
the slides that I used. I wanted to call this up, right? Because, all right, my first call, I was going to call the mortgage rate at being at four by the end of the year. It ended at 6.62. But here's the big thing. I called that the median home price was going to be at 480K, a 12% growth year over year. All right. We hit that in May. All right. And then we dropped down from to 430. The year over year, January or to Jan December change was only three and a half percent. All right. It was not 16.96. All right. But what it did do is we had, if you scan that drop from our top end in May, bring it all the way down. Now we have a drop and it was like 12% or something like that. So that sent me over to, of course, Cromford report where I started doing some numbers and crashing and that kind of stuff. And so if just looking at 2022 down through the end of this and we're not even all the way through february right now so we can't really count that up but we ended january five percent down from where we were of january previous year now you notice we have this little plateau here where this is an annual change year over year on each one of these things we're 28 percent more than the year before 28.6 percent over the year before 28.3 remember i'm always talking about the last weekend of march being when things started coming out that's when you start seeing the drop all right. And that's what we got going on. And this is a continuation that, you know, we're going to, that we've seen, we've saw and we're calling out. All right. But there's, I know something you don't know. Although if you've been watching what I've been saying, you know, what I've been saying for the last two years, you, you've heard this over and over again. So go get yourself a snack for people who haven't go ahead and stay here and listen to this. All of these numbers from these numbers I'm showing you right here to all of this to all of these changes here, lag 30 days after contract acceptance. 30 to 45 days after contract acceptance. When the meeting of minds, a buyer and a seller get together and they agree on a price, it's 30 days later when it actually closes. Right. Now remember, I keep saying November, right here on this particular chart we're looking at, we had the three magic weeks where we were in a serious buyer's market. Right, that I would actually call it out and say, yeah, we are in a buyer's market. It's those three weeks in November, and now we're trending back into a seller's market. And if you notice this this chart and the way this thing is going on here, if we fe finish February as projected, we're going to be 8.5% under prior to that. But remember, this is a year over the year. We have to get to March and April, right, when the downtrend starts happening. Then you'll start seeing the correction. We had the exact same issue over with uh, with the inflation numbers because they treat inflation numbers year over year. And I showed you that chart a couple month, uh, a couple weeks ago, saying how that inflation, all right, it's six and a half percent inflation, not from last week, but from last year. If it's six and a half percent inflation from last week, we be Weimar Republic time, to be honest with you. So you're going to see this lagging indicator and change in monthly median sales price since they they calculate it annually we'll be tracking a little bit behind does that make sense that's why we use the Cromfort report numbers over here and we look at this right here to remind us that when we see that all right we know in a balanced market houses are going to appreciate at the minimum of whatever the inflation rate is and as it gets farther north of 110 you start seeing more and more appreciation added on and you really don't see how it start coming down right until that starts dropping underneath so so what does this mean in the long run try to get the most accurate numbers as possible weekly numbers daily numbers impossible this is why people pay money for the Cromford report because the Cromford report does these numbers daily right when we see it out here in the trenches and in the field right Cromford report is running the the daily numbers. How many went under contract yesterday? How many hit the market yesterday? I only do it once a week. All right. These, these numbers that I'm showing you here, all right, that I re recite off to you, I'm doing these numbers every Wednesday at nine o'clock. Because I think that's the time of the the week that has the least amount of noise to signal. Right, because most people, most houses that are going to come off a contract from the weekend have already been moved over to pending by Monday or Tuesday. You know, 
Most houses that are about to hit the market don't start coming until Thursday and Friday. That's why I think Wednesday morning at 9 o'clock is a really good time to get a, a good, accurate number that's not going to be distorted by a sudden surge in um, purchase. Because remember, we want to watch trends here. We don't necessarily want to watch... Um, we're trying to watch the trends here. We're not necessarily trying to watch, you know, the big picture stuff. I mean, if you want to do that, I can, I can pull up my, my Excel spreadsheet that I track. In fact, hold on for a second while I do that. Pause. See, these are the numbers I track, and this is what I look at, right? And notice what I said, negative numbers being read with a little parentheses around it, let you know that's a negative number. Anyway, so I got this chart going on, right? These are actives going back one year. Notice last March... All right, we were under 5,000 in inventory. Now we're over 15. Okay. New listings, how do they come on? Here's our seasonality in the wintertime. All right, and here's our pending. Look at these pendings going back up. These are houses going back under contract as buyers come in and take them off the market. So actives are the, you know, the actives are the girls at the bar. All right, these are the new girls coming in the door. And these are the ones that are going home with somebody who's not you. Don't ask me why I decided to use that analogy. It just, just sort of popped in my head. So, But that all being said, <clears throat> you know, you're going to hear these people. You're going to see these YouTube channels, all right? Look at how they do their numbers. Are they including an entire year span when they're tracking the numbers? Are they cherry picking where they're going to put their start time in and where they're putting their end time in? All right. Is you know, are they selling you a product that's in competition to real estate? If that makes sense. Are they trying to convince you real estate's a bad place to put your money? You want to put your money over here. Are they some sort of guru sitting out there? To, you know, I mean, two years ago, I was arguing with these people. who was like all about, no, man, you don't want to get locked up into a house. You'll just get it foreclosed on like my dad did. So you just want to live in a van and, you know, you know, code from home and this and that and the other thing. Da, 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 da. And, you know, spend your time in Costa Rica and Thailand and that kind of stuff. And, oh, by the way, here's my self-help book on how to pick up chicks when you're in Thailand. Um, you know, that kind of stuff. So ultimately, real estate always comes down to one thing. What's best for you? Do you need a house to live in? Right. I don't care who you are, where you go, if you're a Democrat or a Republican, uh, if you're pro-life or pro-choice, we all have one thing in common. When it's raining, we like to sleep under a roof. Right. How are you going to get that roof? You can rent or you can buy or you can live with your folks or you can live in your car. I don't care which way you want to go on these things. Right. But if it's time for you to buy a house because you're planning to live in, in that area for more than five years, all right, it's time to buy a house. If you are planning to take the job in Seattle six months from now, don't buy a house. Even in the best market, you probably shouldn't buy a house in six months. All right? Remember that. All right? We've seen over the last six months the biggest swing between buyer side, you know, selling market to buyer's market and then back to selling's market in the history of real estate in Arizona, right? It was that squampus, right? And that's actually got a lot of people sort of shocked out. And this is the market cycle, all right? This is how we kicked in with February and March with that unease coming in at, at the end of March and bang, the interest rates hit, all right? And there were people all through April who still thought we were in a good, you know, we we're in a good market. Oh, it's just, just, just a statistical blip, da, da, da. We went into pessimism. We saw that panic kick off in June and July, all right? We went through the despair of November. Remember, that's when we we're in the buyer's market. Best time to buy is when there's blood in the streets. In November, December, there's blood in the streets. And now we're coming through January, and some of us in our hope, some of us are still in despair. Some of us still are in panic and think we are headed down. Some people want you to stay in panic. All right. Now, I don't make money off this YouTube channel. I will never make money off this YouTube channel because if for some reason I got to the point, I would have to quit being a real estate agent because audience capture is a real thing. All right. So until then, I'm going to help my clients out, do my little podcast because it's fun. I'm going to watch children and pets around water, especially this weekend. Super Bowl party, so there will be alcohol, there will be kids, there will be pets, and some of you guys have pools. All right. 
And I'm going to work my circles, and I want you to work your circles, and I want us all to have a great weekend. I don't care who your team is, as long as it's a good game, and we don't see anybody carted off in an ambulance, either from the field, or from the house you're having your party at, or from the accident you got into because you drove home drunk. All right. You guys have a great weekend. I'll talk to you guys later.